Our PBL project is on the real world and how we're going to live our life. The students will be in groups and each group will be presented with a scenario where they are married and have a variety of children. <laughs> There's a few that are, can be single. Yes, we're going to have a few that are single. Some, fan, some groups will have a single income, some groups will have two incomes. Then they will get um, a location that's going to be determined from their writings and they will have to research um, a place to live and their salary based on the scenarios that they draw from a hat. For a lot of our kids, it was going to be real. They were going to have to see what it means to have a budget, not just to spend money and see how much money you have left over at the end, but to really see where is their money going, how is that going to really impact them as they get older. What we did to launch a project is that we, played, we actually played the game of life. As you know, we always start off a project with something that kind of introduces you to what we're going to work on. The reason we had them play this game was because it does bring up the idea of are you going to go to college or are you just going to go straight into a career? What does that actually mean? Some are groups of three, some are groups of four. Right here, Steven, Tyler, and AJ. It's a mad genius group right there. Letting them choose their group does not work well. Because a lot of times at the beginning they'll choose their friends and then they'll realize real quick that does not work well. You are being grouped according to what you were best suited for. They actually took a Bridges test last week, which is an aptitude test, more along the lines of what are they most interested in, what are they better suited for as far as you know how they feel about things. So what we did, because none of them really had the same, we really try to keep them together as far as what the test said. If your group hasn't already decided who's going to do what, you need to figure out right now who is the project leader, who's going to be the materials person. Remember, project leader, you need to be the meanest person at the table. <laughs> you need to get your table in check. Your materials manager will go into the back and retrieve your group's folder. In it needs to be your individual task lists. Who do you have right now for a project leader? That's probably your better choice. I think Steven being your workshop manager is a good choice. Steven's pretty good about getting things going. Tyler, good choice for presentation manager. And you're going to start filling out your project plan. You need to go ahead and fill out your driving question, your project requirements. Do I expect to see everything word for word there? No. no. But is it acceptable to say, see red paper? No. no. All right. You're going to start your nose and your need to knows, and you will start your curiosities. Questions. You have your nose, your need to knows. You all know different things. You all want to know different things. But I will very quickly answer some of your need to knows. If I can answer it in about 30 seconds, I'll give you an answer to it right now, but you got to raise your hands. For most seventh graders, telling them about budgets and insurance and housing and college and all that stuff is so beyond anything that they could even imagine. But as they get into this, they're going to realize why they need to know this because it is going to be part of their lives as they get older. Whenever we write our PBL projects, we stare at the teaks and we try and build the product from there. Most of the time they're science driven with the math and corporations. We really try to find a reason why the kids would want to know this. Why would they care about it? How is it important to them? Because if, they're, if it's not important to them, the project's just another project. But if they take total ownership of it and we make it real to them, they're going to be able to understand it in a way that they need to for their age. The maturity on what they do, they know that the professional ethics are that you don't cut and paste, that you give bibliographies, you show citations of work. They know that you have to collaborate, that one person can't carry the entire group because there's so much involved with it, it's not going to work. Nobody really bothers them because people know what they have to do, they know what their job is, and that trust is there that they're going to be able to work at their own pace and still get the job done. In the past, we've always done desk grits where it's you coming to me and coming to Miss Sig. If you're not on the right path, what do we do? Send you back. We try and help you find your way back. 
And what better people to get feedback from than people who are doing the exact kind of work that you are? Be specific. Be very detailed. I like how you use Animoto because it makes the presentation more attractive. Okay. <laughs> you like the movie theater? What is it that like you like about this pamphlet? Um, I like this and let's give some cool and warm feedback back. A lot of what? Yeah, that food looks good though. Here, what'd you do? The folding. The, the, the with the picture. Oh. Well, you have the pictures, but you also made it short and sweet and to the point. But then what happened when you got to the hotels? So I want you to give them your brochure, and I want you to give them your brochure. <laughs> and let's give some cool and warm feedback back. It's a, lot of, yeah. a lot of what? It's pretty. <laughs> it's appealing. I have to say that the colors are very, makes you want to just grab it. What else? Uh, well, I think they like the font they use is too big because it makes it just like like look. There's like so much information you don't want to read it. Okay. They did a good job of putting pictures up. Yeah. Boy says right there, 25 miles of beautiful side path. Scenic. I mean scenic path. So we've got the cool warm. The warm feedback is what? What did you like about it? I like that it's pretty. Okay. Mm, How? Nice. What, what makes it pretty? The, the pictures. Lights. Okay. I think the lights. And the descriptive words. Okay. And if we had to go back and maybe look at redesigning it, how would what would make you want to read that a little bit more? And have more information about the whole city. Or like as Boise as a whole, or no, like just, like, like separate like like mall, the mall, the shopping stuff, and okay. uh, so the attractions. The yeah. Okay. So today for the presentation, we um we did the floor plan. Well, basically, we got our budget stretching, we did mostly everything on the board, so... We did our budget narrative, which basically describes the budget in words, and how we ended up yeah, how we ended up with that money, and how we spent it. Uh, we did our brochure, which explains where we live. Where we live is Wichita, Kansas, and we explained the attractions and everything else. This is my 10th year teaching, and this is my first year with PBL, and the experiences of it is so beyond anything I could have ever imagined. When you give kids total creative, you know, respect and you just kind of let them go, you give them what it is you need to see at the end and they are allowed to make it their own. What you get is beyond anything as an adult we could ever imagine. Kids are 12 and 13. It's amazing what they're able to produce. The levels that they take it to is well beyond anything you're ever going to see in a worksheet or you're going to see in a PowerPoint where you tell them what has to be on each and every slide. It's going to be what's important to them and why they feel that it's important for them to know these things. Mm -hmm.